There's nothing worse than lying down in bed on a Friday night, getting yourself all cozied up with a book or a movie, when suddenly... <coughs> Prod has crashed thanks to some unforeseen error deep in that part of your code that Tom the Genius wrote five years ago and hasn't seen the light of day since. Well, I guess that's your weekend plan, Warrant. It's basically impossible to write code that will never break, but more and more the industry is making the realization that that's still something we should strive for. The idea is that investing time in proper error handling up front will save countless headaches down the road, and modern programming languages are starting to adopt that philosophy, moving away from try-catch style exception handling to more robust options. One of those languages is Gleam, a statically typed functional programming language designed for building reliable and scalable applications. Gleam runs on the Erlang Beam VM, though it also compiles to JavaScript with TypeScript definitions, so it can run in the browser. It's a simple, straightforward language, and its approach to error handling is no different. Today, we're going to discuss how Gleam helps programmers handle error conditions without unnecessary complexity. Ready to break some stuff and then fix it? Gleam is usually compiled to Erlang, which practices offensive programming. The mentality when writing Erlang is to let it crash. The idea is that if you've encountered an unexpected state, the process should crash. A supervisor process will handle restarting it for you until you can hot swap the code with a new version. If you want to learn more about structuring OTP applications in Gleam, check out this video here. This style of programming is great at combating hard to understand concurrency bugs in distributed systems. But in reality, most errors in our programs are as mundane as some invalid inputs, which are better handled with defensive programming. This is why Gleam allows for both styles, so you, as the developer, can handle errors at the appropriate level. Gleam has two keywords which you can use to manually cause a panic, panic and to do. Unless the panicking process is being supervised, this will halt your program. Generally speaking, we panic when we encounter an error so egregious that we simply don't know how we'll ever recover. We print out the useful information we have and stop the program. Often, we expect data to be a certain shape, and if it's not, we decide to panic. However, this is a little unwieldy, so Gleam has a special syntax for this called let assert. Let assert allows us to try a single pattern match, and if the pattern doesn't match, cause panic. Let assert can be helpful when testing assumptions about the shape of our data. These constructs blow up our program at runtime and are meant to be used in contexts where that's acceptable, like when prototyping or practicing Erlang's offensive programming. However, most Gleam code, especially library code, will take a more defensive approach using the result type. You may be familiar with the result type from other language. It's really simple. Here's its basic definition. In Gleam, when an operation can fail, it generally returns a result, which can be one of two things. An OK wrapped around the thing you wanted, or an error wrapped around a value representing whatever the error was. This function calculates the price of a given item, but can fail if the item is priceless. Instead of exploding or throwing an error for someone else to catch, we return the error from the function as part of our result. If you've never worked with errors as regular values before, this may seem strange, but systems that treat errors as special cases using an exception system with try-catch, for example, add complexity to our code. There are some big benefits to having errors as normal values. Firstly, you can instantly tell if a function might fail from its return type, which means you don't have to litter your code with try-catch blocks to defend against unexpected exceptions. Also, there's only one line of control flow, which makes your code much easier to reason about. After all, throw is just a fancy go-to if you really think about it. Of course, there are definitely trade-offs. Errors as values can pollute the call stack, and sometimes you want to bubble an error all the way to the top of your program to reset something like a parser. These practices are more common in non-functional languages though, and don't play into Gleam so we'll leave further discussion out of this video. Oh, and by the way, I need you to check the result of hitting that subscribe button. Now that we have an idea of what might happen when an operation fails, we can explore a few options for handling errors. Let's embrace our inner PHP devs and write the code to calculate the cost of our next Lambo. We've already seen how we can use panic and let assert syntax to crash the program when an error is encountered. Ideally, we should be handling the error, especially in library code that others might use. But there are some acceptable situations for using this. If you're prototyping, moving fast and breaking things, probably fine. Alternatively, you might use let assert to assert an assumption that your program relies on and cannot function without, like compiling a regex. This is is commonly called negative space programming. This brings us to option two, handling the error ourselves. We match on the result with a case statement and go down different branches for success and failure. In this simple case, we handle the error by printing it out. But what if we don't know how to recover from a particular error right away? The third and most common option is to leave handling an error to someone else. We pass the result up the call stack and if there's an error, that's someone else's problem. The result.try function from the standard library takes a result and a callback function describing what to do with the success 
success value. If the result given to it is an error, it will simply return without calling the callback. This pattern is very similar to the way the question mark operator works in Rust, but in Glean, it's just a function, no special syntax required. However, callback-based code like this can become quite nested. In the world of JavaScript, this is often referred to as callback hell. Look what happens when we try to calculate the total price of three different cars. Luckily for us, Gleam has a special syntax for flattening out callbacks called use. Transforming a regular callback to use is quite simple. Let's say you call a function, you give it some arguments, and the final argument is a callback where you provide a lambda. To flatten out the call, type the keyword use, followed by the parameters of the callback, then a backwards arrow, and finally, the regular function call without the lambda argument. Now, everything underneath use becomes the body of the callback function. See how there's no rightward drift once we add use? The effect becomes clearer when applied to multiple callbacks in a row. This helps us align the happy path to the right, so code becomes easier to follow and understand. When writing code that keeps track of errors and passes them up the chain, we usually do it because we want to recover from the error, or we want to log or display a chain of context when an error occurs. If you want to recover from errors, you probably probably want to have one or more custom error types. Let's say we're writing some code to read in a config file for processing. When we read the file, that could error. We'll have a custom error type for our application, and one of the variants will be for this particular error. It contains the file error we might encounter when reading the file. When we try to read the file, we might map any error to our custom error type using result.mapError. If we perform all our fallible operations this way, we'll always have a custom error we can match on and recover from if we need to. If you don't need to recover from errors and simply want to add context to errors for debugging, consider using a library like Snag. Snag provides a boiler-free ad hoc error type, much like anyhow in the Rust world. The previous code becomes one statement. This way, you don't have to maintain a big custom error type. It's convenient for providing user context when you're writing software where failures aren't really recoverable, like CLI tools or data pipelines. We've done it. We've successfully saved ourselves and our colleagues from the nightmare of unhandled errors and secured our nap time for the foreseeable future. What do you think of Gleam's error handling? Let me know in the comments if you love it, or if you prefer another approach to the problem. And if you want to learn more about supervisors or other Gleam OTP patterns, click the video on the left. Or to see what the almighty algorithm thinks you should watch next, it's the one on the right. See ya!